all uh, welcome back to knowledge base and welcome back to xamarin tech talk and today we'll discuss about uh, a new topic so a topic for today is working with data caching in mobile applications using akavash so let's just get started uh, first thing is why data cache is needed so when we are working with any enterprise applications and when we are working with an application which has a more user base or dealing with more uh, data then uh, the important concept is performance so performance will be the key part when we are using a data cache so it helps a lot in dealing with performance and second one is network resiliency so we are uh, knowing about akavash so what is this akavash this is basically a, a small library which uh, perform all the uh, operations uh, in an asynchronous manner this is a persistent uh, um, key value store uh, uh, concept this particular akavash can be used in desktop and even mobile applications this is based on sqlite so um, it has multiple um, uh, concepts um, within that which deals with the types of uh, storage and um, the main important concept of Akavash is every specific data item within that particular cache has uh, a, a time span. So I can just specify um, if I just want to um, uh, make my data to expire uh, at that particular point of time. So that is the main advantage uh, of uh, Akavash. And coming to uh, the types of uh, data storage within um, Akavash is the first is local storage and the second one is in memory and the third one is secure and the fourth one is user account. Um, local storage uh, it will be stored in a SQLite database in a specific format and in memory uh, the lifespan of that particular data will be uh, the application uh, instance. So if I close the application, the data will be lost. The secure, uh, this particular thing is used to store usernames and passwords. Um, and next one is user account. This particular thing is stored in user settings. Here, all the data uh, in this Akavash is stored in the form of blobs, binary uh, objects. So um, basically binary objects are used to store um, unstructured data. So that is what the uh, data storage concept. So coming to usage, um, if I just want to use uh, Akavash within my application, the key uh, element that I need to target and the uh, primary object that I need to use is blob cache. Um, based on this blob cache, I can just uh, um, achieve all these specific um, um, APIs within that particular um, Akavash library. So, and one more thing is, uh, for every specific uh, um, blob cache, we just need to specify an application name. This is not specifically mandatory, but it can be easily differentiated uh, using the application name. So, in the app start, it's uh, better to have a uh, app name defined so that uh, it can easily be um, differentiated. And we'll see what are the different APIs uh, that are there um, within Akavash. So there are a lot of other APIs also, uh, but these are the specific uh, main APIs that I can say. One is inserting an object. So um, based on the type, I can just insert a specific object. If it is string, if it is an, um, a specific uh, model, so I can just specify uh, the storing of that particular model using this insert objects if i can just insert multiple objects also get object this particular uh, api is used to get an object uh, based on a key get all objects get created at as we discussed like the every particular um, data element uh, has one specific time time span or date time offset so we can just get what is the date time offset of that particular uh, data key element 
load from image URL. So if we are trying to have any specific images and if I just want to store that particular means if I just want to have a cache mechanism that to be implemented onto that particular image, then we can just go ahead and use this load from image URL. Invalidate object. It deletes one specific object from your data cache. Based on the key, we can just uh, use this particular um, API method. Invalidate all objects. It removes every data within that particular uh, data cache. Vacuum. So uh, we'll be having a specific daytime offset for every key element. So based on the expiry, so it checks whether the expired objects are available or not. If they are available, it removes all the expired objects. So let's just get started on seeing a, a small example. So uh, this is a small example that um, I have created. So it has a small model which um, shows your key and the cache value and the daytime offset. I just want to show it in a diff, um, means, um, detailed format. So that's the reason I have just created a model and I have just created a table view. So I just want to show that particular um, screen uh, in a different way. And for um, having Akawash into your application, so we need to uh, download a package, Akawash. Go to packages, Akawash. So this is the package that we need to include into our applications. Include that particular package. Akawash has a dependency of Akawash SQLite 3. As we discussed, like Akawash works on SQLite 3. So once uh, the package is included, uh, you can just have a small screen. Uh, this is just for illustration purpose. So I'm just... Um, opening this um, storyboard uh, in my Xcode. So if you see here, I'm just having a text field two buttons and a table view that's all uh, here in the design this is to save the cache uh, this is to clear the complete cache and this is to show the cached elements and here if you see uh, we are having certain namespaces one is uh, system.reactive.link this particular um, namespace is necessary for uh, making all the operations um, for this particular akawash asynchronous so this is very important to in, uh, have in our application. And the other one, the main important is Akawash itself. So here you can able to see this cache data is one specific um, uh, class that I have defined. And I'm just having a view controller where um, I'm just trying to get all the cached elements based on the keys. So here the first concept that we are looking at is local machine. So local machine get all keys it fetches all the keys um, based on the type local machine and um, it shows all the specific keys uh, within that particular storage and i'm just getting a specific element based on uh, the key so i'm just passing the key and as now the type is string so i'm just uh, specifying it as string so if it is a model you can just specify a model and using this method, I'm just getting the time. What is the time that uh, a date time offset? So I'm just adding it to a list. And when I'm just clicking on save local cache, I'm just trying to uh, insert an object, the key, a random key that I'm just using and the text entry field. So whatever the text that I'm entering on the text field, I'm just storing. And uh, I'm just getting that uh, information and I'm just storing in a list that's it so in clear we are using invalidate all so that whatever the uh, data or whatever the keys that are available in the in my local cache it will be completely cleared let's just run the application So uh, you can able to see that there are certain data available already. So I'm just clicking on clear cache. 
so there is no uh, cache available right now so we'll just rerun the uh, application again there's no cache so i'm just trying to have um testing cache so this is stored uh, in my uh, cache let's just see um, how the data is stored so i'm just putting a breakpoint here and i'm just restarting the application just have it in insert object test one two three so we'll just have the connection And we'll run this and we'll stop the application and we'll just open uh, the DB browser and I'm just going to location so I can able to see blobs DB so I'm just opening this particular database so if you see here, uh, there is a specific structure that is uh, available here. So if I browse the data, you can able to see uh, data which is available. So we'll just run the application again. I see a problem so we'll just change the key because as the key is um, unique um, I think it didn't store that particular data in my cache save to local cache and we'll just open this and we'll refresh so you can able to see uh, my data stored here so uh, this is one um, concept of um, uh, a local cache so here we got one more thing which is secure and we got um, um, in memory and we got user account so these are the uh, other um, types that we can just use um, for storing our local cache So you can just find more information about Akawash um, in this GitHub link. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have any queries or concerns or issues, you can reach me at uh, my email ID and I'm available at Twitter. And that is my blog, uh, www.netmobile. Thank you so much.